Welcome to Sober Math. We're living in the age of misinformation. How do we know what is true and what is false? That requires digging a little bit deeper. We have to confront our own biases, think critically, and do our own fact checking. Today I do a little bit of mathematical fact checking and investigate this image of the Earth and Moon released by NASA JPL. For both globists and flat earthers, I wish to extend an olive branch. Uh, not that one. There we go. Something everyone can agree upon is that a claim should be self-consistent, right? Today I estimate the distance of a camera to an object based on the perspective in the photo. In particular, I'll investigate this image released by NASA JPL, documented as being taken by the EPIC camera aboard the Discover satellite, orbiting at Lagrange point one, and calculate its distance using ordinary trigonometry and a few basic assumptions. First, let's build some intuition. So here I'm holding two objects side by side and displaying their true relative size. But in this aligned view, we can see that the smaller object is getting larger and larger compared to the background one as the camera approaches it. So what are the relative sizes of the Earth and the Moon? Well, if we do a quick search, we see that the Earth has a radius of 6,371 kilometers, and the Moon has a radius of 1,737 kilometers. Suppose we saw a photograph of the Moon in front of the Earth in exactly that proportion, as depicted by this drawing, well, that would be rather odd because we would expect the two to be side by side. And clearly the moon is in front of the earth. And so we would suspect that such a photo would be fake, unless the photo was taken by a satellite ridiculously far away. But if we make the gray circle even smaller, the photo is again definitely fake, unless there is some unusual distorted image projection. But as far as I know for telescopes and most cameras, the projection is rectilinear, no distortion. But as soon as we remove the forced perspective by moving the gray circle outside of the limb of the blue circle, we can't really claim the photo is fake because for all we know the moon is well behind the earth in that case, and there's no way to know. We can only infer that the moon is closer than the earth is to the camera if the moon is at least partially eclipsing the earth. To solve this problem, we're going to need three pieces of information. The first is the distance formula. So given two points P and Q, we might want to know the distance between them, I'll call it b. So if we're on the xy plane, and we know the xy coordinates of p and q, we can plug them into this formula, which is a version of the Pythagorean theorem. If b is part of triangle ABC, then it turns out we can evaluate the area of that triangle without knowing any of the angles. Just the lengths will do. And so we plug a, b, and c into this formula here, which we call Heron's theorem. Notice we have a new variable s, which is just a plus b plus c over 2, and we call it the semi-perimeter, or the half the perimeter. So for our third bit of information, it turns out that for every triangle, there is a unique circle that goes around that triangle and touches all three vertices, which we call the circumcircle. And we can calculate its radius and its diameter from this formula. So our intermediate purpose is to measure the diameter of a circle on a photograph in terms of the number of pixels, but wait a minute, couldn't we do that directly? Why are we bothering with these triangles? Well, it's not so simple. If we were to try to measure the diameter of a circle directly, we can see that we won't exactly be able to find a crisp edge unless we're lucky. So the limb of the circle is crisp on one side and a little bit fuzzy on the other, and it's not clear exactly where the edge of the circle is. By using the triangular method, we can pick three points on the limb of a circle. We don't even need the complete photograph of the planet. We can have a partial photograph of the planet and we'll still be able to make our measurements. So let's begin the derivation. So our first assumption, assumption zero, is that a planet can be modeled as a circle. So here's a diagram of the satellite photographing the Earth. I'm going to follow the convention of capital letters for the Earth and lowercase for the Moon. So here the Earth's angle of view is capital omega, and the line from the satellite to the center of the Earth bisects the angle, which we call omega over 2. So we label this right triangle with the opposite side being capital R for radius and the hypotenuse being H. And we complete the diagram with lowercase letters for the moon in the foreground. And the distance between the Earth and moon I'm calling capital delta. Alright, so here we have a very thin triangle. On one side we have capital H, on the other side we have little h and then delta. Well, it turns out that little h plus delta is only 16 kilometers longer than that very long 1.5 million kilometer capital H. 
And so as a simplifying assumption, I'm going to say let capital H equal little h plus delta. With our large right triangle, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And then sine of cap omega over 2 is cap r over cap h. And for the moon, sine of little omega over 2 is little r over little h. So for our next really good approximation, if the angle is small, then the sine of the angle approaches the angle. So the smaller the angle is, the better this approximation is. And it's based on something called the Taylor series. The biggest angle is cap omega over 2, which is supposedly a quarter of a degree, which well more than qualifies. So the sine of this angle agrees with the angle by within 3% of 1% of 1%, which is way better than we need. So that approximation is standard for astronomy, so I don't even include it as an assumption. Assumption 2 requires a little explanation. In summary, it just says that in the photograph that what you see is what you get. Most cameras have a rectilinear or perspective projection and faithfully capture the lengths. And if the angle is small, incidentally, they also preserve the angles. So now picture a camera, I know it's a little meta, and its field of view. And now picture an object with its field of view. So for most cameras and telescopes in particular, to excellent approximation, the ratio of the field of view to the object angle, that is the ratio of green to blue, is equal to the ratio of the digital sensor width to the projected object width, as measured in pixels. As a consequence, for a second object, this implies that the ratio of the two angles approximately equals the ratio of the two widths. And we can call these two objects the Earth and the Moon. So cap D and little d are the diameters of the Earth and Moon respectively. I put the letters in boldface to remind us that these are photograph diameters in pixels, not physical diameters. Now we bring these three good approximations together to get this neat relationship. Now let's define the ratio of the photo diameters as rho prime in bold and define the actual ratio of the official radii of the Earth to the Moon as regular light face rho without the prime. Now plug these two into our neat relationship to make a cute relationship. We invoke assumption 1 to get rid of cap H temporarily and now easily solve for H. Factor, distribute, move a term to one side, Factor again and isolate. And now here's h in terms of the ratio of diameters in the photo, the ratio of the actual recorded diameters, or radii, both are true, and the recorded distance between the Earth and the Moon. Then invoke assumption 1 again and solve for cap h. And that's it, our exquisite main result. Our supposed orbital height of a photographing satellite taking a picture of a spherical moon eclipsing a spherical Earth. But one thing left to do. Let's see if we can get back that 1.5 million kilometers from the digital picture. So here we go. Let's start evaluating and use our newfound formula. I've opened the photo in Microsoft Paint, and the little crosshair is hard to see in motion, so I'm drawing little yellow circles around the crisp limb of the Earth. And then I'll revisit each and record their grid locations. Observe that they match the indicator on the lower left. And then I repeat for the moon. Now take these values and color them. For the earth points, we need to take each of three pairs of these and plug them into the distance formula three times to find the distances between them, which become the sides of the earth triangle. Now evaluate the semi-perimeter of the triangle, and then repeat for the moon. But instead of reusing A, B, and C, let's put an apostrophe or prime on each. I know I'm being a little casual with the notation. To me, prime means other. Now plug these values into Heron's formula and evaluate to get the triangle areas. Finally, we compute the circumdiameters of the Earth and moon as measured in pixels in the picture. Now we can compute the photo diameter ratio, which is 2.71. Ha! Huh. So the ratio is approximately Euler's number. Fun coincidence. Or is it a conspiracy? Well, no, obviously it's a coincidence.
Then compute the radial ratio of the official recognized radii of the spherical Earth to the moon. And pardon the alliteration. The last bit of info, the distance between Earth and moon, 384,400 kilometers, which is the average, and doesn't deviate too much. Put it all together and we get little h. And plug in approximation 1 to get big H. And there we are. I estimated the orbital height must be approximately 1.47 million kilometers, which is about a million miles from Earth, which is off by about 2%. That's definitely acceptable given the simple method I used. I'm sure most of you aren't shocked that this calculation matches the photo captions. I mean scientists carefully checking their work? Who would have thought?